My name is Victoria Gilchrist, and I want you to give AI a sporting chance. Sports. Sports are things that unite us around the world. We have the winter and summer Olympic Games. We have FIFA World Cup football, which you know, we in the US call soccer. There is NBA basketball, NFL football. It's so hard not to get wrapped up in the excitement of the games, whether if you're watching at home or live at the stadium. But when we pull back the curtain of these events, there is a darker side that we need to investigate. Meet Danielle. Danielle's story is not one that you would expect. A bright, young 17-year-old, Danielle came to Phoenix one hot August, anticipating a start at a prominent Arizona university. She went to an off-campus party where she met Eddie. Eddie seemed cool enough at first, tall and attractive. He asked her to dance, and he told her how smart she was and how pretty she was. What started off as a casual relationship turned into a nightmare within two weeks. Danielle was turned out. She was beaten and coerced and forced into being Eddie's prostitute. Danielle was mentally and physically abused and forced to go wherever and whenever Eddie wanted in order to survive. So something so simple as attending a basketball game had a different meaning for Danielle. She had a quota to keep or else. Unfortunately, this story is not uncommon. Men, women, and children are trapped in the world of sex trafficking and shuttled from city to city, country to country, game to game. We know this is happening because we know sex traffickers go where the money is. And unfortunately, there is much money to be made at live sporting events. Sex trafficking is a $99 billion a year industry, with the majority of that coming from developed nations like the US, Japan, Western Europe. When we look at some of the locations of our most high-profile sporting events, we compare them with the high-trafficking sex traffic areas. Just look at the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Japan is considered the hub for sex trafficking in Asia. The NCAA Final Four in Minneapolis. Minnesota ranks 13th in the nation by the FBI for sex trafficking. And then, of course, we have to look in our own backyard here in Arizona. We're not immune to sex trafficking. We get a constant stream of sporting events. We get the NCAA Final Four, the Waste Management Open, and sometimes even the Super Bowl. So let's talk about the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is sometimes called the Great American Myth, as it is considered the US's largest boon for sex trafficking. Now, contrarians will have you believe that the data is inconclusive or it's all just hype in the media, but you asked Danielle if her experience is more than is just conjecture. An Arizona State University study of the 2014 Super Bowl in New Jersey and the 2015 Super Bowl here in Phoenix showed a marked increase in the sex ads on sites like Backpage.com and Craigslist. In New Jersey, the ads increased 60% and here 30% for the times before and during the games. Additionally, the return phone numbers for those games were from different area codes, which suggests to us that the victims were being trafficked in from other locations. While, of course, there is increased police presence in these large sporting events, their focus is on arresting the perpetrators. This leaves victims like Danielle and those around her lost and afraid with no way to get back to home. In fact, in Arizona, less than 2% of sex trafficking victims are even identified. There has to be some way to get to these victims and give them a road to safety. And I believe there is. I believe that we can make a difference in the sex trafficking industry and the lives of people like Danielle by using artificial intelligence, facial recognition technology to identify victims of sex trafficking at these large sporting events. Yes, facial recognition is still highly controversial, 
but it is already in our everyday lives. We use it to unlock our cell phones, to come into the airport from overseas, even if you go to the casino. Using artificial intelligence, facial recognition technology to help rescue victims from sex trafficking is merely the next step in the continuum. Many of the venues where we have sporting and concert events are already decked out with this technology. It's used for crowd control, security, counting people, even entertainment. We can easily repurpose this technology to scan the crowds and match the faces against known databases of missing children. Then that information can be sent to local law enforcement for verification and action. Of course, for this plan to work, we would need to partner with care agencies so that once the victims have been identified, they can immediately be moved to care. There is precedence for positive use cases of facial recognition technology. One software provider has, whose software has been in use since 2013 in San Diego says that their software has led to over 12,000 police actions. Just last year in New Delhi, where they implemented facial recognition technology to help solve their problem of missing children, within four days of implementing their program, they were able to identify almost 3,000 missing children and get them home. While that is a great story, for every story like this, we hear one where things don't quite go as planned. For instance, there was a parade in England in Notting Hill where police scanning the crowd looking for perpetrators were met with only 2% accuracy. And they found that the biggest issues were with the identification of women and minorities. In situations such as this, racial bias, or even privacy and security that really come to mind when people think about not using facial recognition technology. Ra facial recognition technology racial bias occurs because the base data used to train the software on how to read the faces is not diverse. There needs to be more examples of various ethnicities and various races. The easiest way to get more base data is to scan more faces. The more faces we scan, the better the data. The better the data, the more accurate the technology. On the other side, we're still looking at privacy concerns. When you walk into a venue, you don't want to have to think well, who's watching me and what's going on with my data. These are all valid concerns. And unfortunately, the rule of law has yet to catch up with this technology. Researchers have suggested that we look at things like increasing the transparency into the algorithms, putting limits on the type of data that is captured or the length of time that it is held, or even implementing third-party oversight. These are just a few ways to help us feel better about using facial recognition technology. But when we look at these concerns, we must seriously weigh them against this very prescient problem of women, men, and children trapped in sex trafficking around the world. Now, I'm not saying that we should cancel the Super Bowl, but I am saying that we should be able to use the technology that we currently have in place to make a difference in the lives of the estimated 20 million victims trapped in sex trafficking. This is why I want you to give AI a sporting chance. Now that you've heard all this, you may be thinking, well, I am not a software engineer. What can I do in this fight against sex trafficking? And I want to leave you with a couple of things. First, educate yourselves. You can look at what's going on in sex trafficking in your community. Locally, we have sites like trustaz.org, humantraffickinghotline.org, or even a UN site can lead you to information about what's going on in your community. Second, advocate. Advocate for organizations like Not For Sale and Hope For Children that work domestically and internationally to extract victims from sex trafficking, teach them new skills, and help them reintegrate into society. And lastly, engage. There are apps like Stop App 
that you download to your phone that allow you to anonymously report instances of what you feel may be sex trafficking. This information is gathered worldwide and transmitted to law enforcement agencies all around the world. So you've got all this, you've got some great tools, yet some people may still be wondering about their personal privacy if we start to use facial recognition technology at these large sporting events to help in the fight against sex trafficking. And I want to ask you, is your privacy worth more than someone's life? Thank you.